Where Are All My Friends, sitting down with Dan Newman. And this is cool because we're both not from San Diego. We're both in San Diego. We have crafted a set out of your hotel room, thanks to you. That we have. Love it. Um, I actually don't know if you're from Florida, but we both spent some time living in Florida. And we've been friends, I think we met really because of Under Oath. I believe it was that yes. Under Oath tour where we met, I think. But through all of it, I've known that you are incredibly good with all things video. And I've seen you do all sorts of different things and just accomplish different levels of success. And we've never really had a conversation like this where we've broken it down. So this is kind of perfect for me because I love, I love when it's organic. I love when I'm yeah. legit learning as we talk. So I'm really stoked on this one. I love that we, you were here for work. Mm -hmm. I was here driving down, doing some stuff in San Diego, living in LA. So it kind of worked out. We had this one night. We made it happen. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for swinging by. Yeah, this is awesome. And I mean, job well done. I tried. Yeah, I tried. It was a short, really quick set design. Yeah, well, I know that you're very <laughs> passionate about California then and now. So. People and places. Exactly. And that's what this whole podcast is about. <laughs> people so and places. There we go. Uh, but no, the way that I like to start it off is before we get into anything deep, just for anybody who doesn't know who you are and what you do, what is that? Or what that is? What that is. Uh, so <clears throat> my name is Dan Newman. I'm a director, producer, DP, kind of jack of all trades is kind of where I got started and how I've kind of paved my way. Um, I prefer to be more in like the director producer role right now. I yeah. still shoot, uh, kind of DP a lot of stuff, but I want to be known and kind of really focus my efforts and energy towards directing. Yeah. That's where my passion is, uh, kind of finding stories, telling stories, sharing stories. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So that's who I am, kind of what I do. Um, I'm currently, uh, engulfed in the world of boxing. Um, been doing uh kind of creating content um for for boxing with let's see here with this company matchroom boxing for the last three years uh since 2017 fall 2017 and um started out freelance for those guys while i was on and off the road with yeah. under oath and other bands um and yeah it just kind of picked up um i was touring i think it was I got off a U.S. tour with Father John Misty, jumped on one with Under Oath for a few announcements. I think it was leading into um, the record release yeah. uh, for the new album. Yeah, all their the stuff with Fearless and all yeah. that. Yeah. And um, I was on a Amtrak trip that I just took for it's like 26 days straight where it's like I remember kind of that. finding myself uh, – I didn't really – outside of like touring, I'm touring with – 13 other guys in a tour bus. Uh, I'm getting to see the world, everything in it, but I'm not getting to experience much on my own. Yeah, It's with the guys, which absolutely loved, but um, I kind of want to set out and take the opportunity to find myself and like follow my, my dreams of traveling the U.S. on my terms. Yeah, touring's really interesting because you get these incredible experiences that are unlike anything else, but... It's so unlike anything else that you can get a little bit lost and you can lose sight of priorities. And it's really interesting. And especially like the schedules, the work, everything about it. Also, if you are listening and you hear a train, we're at a hotel outside of San Diego and there's a train. So. Right on the 101. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like it, it, it is. It's a really interesting experience. And this is everything I want to talk about. This is everything I want to hear of like how you got from those points into the pivots that you took. Like that's all, like that's what this podcast is about to me is like learning those moments and why you pivoted the way you did and how you learned what you did and all of those things to me. I'm so intrigued because I really do think that it's easy to look at where somebody's at right now and have that must be nice moment. Mm -hmm. But behind that must be nice moment, there is years of work and finding yourself and learning what you actually care about. And it's so interesting to me. So from here, now that you've kind of explained where you're at right now and what you've been doing, I guess the spot that I love to come back to is where you kind of found your thing, where you maybe picked up a camera for the first time, or maybe it was before that. But 
finding something outside of, I guess, the norm and like where things start to click or where that kind of starts? So I don't know about clicking, but my first memory of picking up a camera yeah. was my childhood. Didn't have, for some reason in my household, my dad's camera was always broken, but we would always, my, my grandparents lived pretty close by. My grandfather had a video camera, like an old like VHS camera where it was the camera itself with the cable that went to a VHS record deck. Oh, so wow. you couldn't go anywhere with the camera. You just had to literally be stationary in your like little zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like have a moment right there and exactly. right there only. Yeah. So as a child, like we're probably talking, I don't know, s between six and nine years old, maybe something like that. Some Somewhere in there, maybe six and eight. And um, myself and my sister would just record home videos. Like I would make these ridiculous like lip sync videos, like pre whatever lip sync shows are going on on TV yeah. right now. Um, but these lip sync videos that would never see the light of day anywhere because we're talking like, I don't know, 96, 97. Yeah. Um, and that was like, that's me like having my sister in there lip syncing and then me just doing these ridiculous, stupid little camera angles here and there. Uh, like static locked off camera and then zooms and like close up and like, just like full on at like seven or eight years old. Um, but I totally know that moment, right? Like, yeah. it's just like, it's almost, it's just another toy. Like you're just playing around. It's just like a, yo, here's this thing. Exactly. And if I wish, well, my parents definitely have those videos, uh, at home, uh, Sick. in the archive somewhere, but that's cool. That's cool that you have that. In the yeah. Family. Yeah. They haven't seen the light of day and I don't know if I, yeah, that's maybe. probably better for the internet. Not it's for the family. Yeah. Let's keep that in the family. Um, but yeah, that was like the, like my childhood, my dad always like my dad, along with my uncles, he has three brothers were extremely like into the arts. Yeah. Creating films, short films oh, whoa. when they were between the year like 18 to 25 like the, in that in that range like that young adult range that's what they wanted to do Whoa. and so, so that was the, very much in the family they supported very the much in the family and they were very like acting in their own uh videos They're, they have like a ton of short films silent films all this stuff but it was a passion and my like talking to my dad uh within the last couple of months here um you know he it's very like close to his heart because like he never got to do what I'm doing. And he, he just blamed it on his, um, lack of drive. He just felt stupid. So he's like, I'm not gonna like, I don't have it in me. I don't feel confident enough to go make video content to or not make video content. Uh, I say that content now as, right. but like make, he, he didn't think he could make it doing what he wanted to do following his dream. Like he just lacked the confidence Damn. to like, keep going and yeah. keep doing and doing and doing. Um, so within the family, that was always a thing. Yeah. It was always around yeah. the arts. Um, th all of everyone kind of, my dad just gave in and did construction. Oh, well, and that was yeah. like his thing. That's his lane. That's still his lane to this day. Yeah. I mean, as uh, a father too, though, right? It's like you have kids, you have a family. Yeah, like yeah, you have to like, take care of your family. I yeah, get it. Yeah. You can't... Uh, I would say I'm very, I'm very lucky, very blessed to yeah. be doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And if it wasn't cool. for my parents understanding yeah. that, it, I think they just saw that I had an opportunity and I could drop out of school Yeah. and do something like something that my dad wanted to do was like, that's cool. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Where but, was it that you were growing up? Uh, small town called Albertus, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Town of 2000. Okay. Yeah. So I grew up in PA. All right. Um, lived there until I was 24. Oh, whoa. So you, you grew up in PA. Yeah. Grew up very small town syndrome, very bubble, very like, you don't know like what the world around you is like yeah. outside of that little town. You don't know what, what else is out there. Pennsylvania is a really wild place too, because like you have major cities, but then you even have like Amish communities, right? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. yeah. What was the biggest major city or like, what were you closest to? Uh, Allentown, Bethlehem, oh, okay. which, which isn't even like massive. No. Yeah. Which we, you were, were you in Bethlehem when we played Bethlehem? I don't know. Actually, I don't remember. I've definitely been through Allentown, Bethlehem on tour before. Yeah. It's a, we played at Bethlehem Steel at our Sands Casino. 
oh, that right. massive room. I massive was there. Room, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an oddly lit scene because I feel like they don't get anything. So when people get yeah, shows, no. they're just like, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's... Um, oh, wow. Up till 24. Up to 24. Yeah. And then I went from there to uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Worked Whoa. at the University of Michigan Health System. You for, worked at the... Yeah. What, dude? Yeah. Yeah. I worked in a hospital uh, filming surgeries, uh, operations, people getting their hearts and organs and lungs taken out. And then put in a bucket and then being replaced Ew. and solder back up. Yeah. You like, could deal with that? No, no. I mean, I did it. I did it because it was a job and it was like, uh, I kind of, it was like the fake it till you make it. Like I needed to, I was in Pennsylvania. I needed a job. I needed a job. I needed some sort of sense of security because I was freelance for so long, for like a year and a half yeah. working for Mars Chocolate and all that freelance work dries up. Yeah. After so long, like it's not a re recurring thing. Like once you create the content, yeah, they'll sit on that as like a corporation will sit on it for right. five years, three okay, or four. I might have missed a, a slightly important <laughs> detail where I jumped around. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I love this. But so you dropped out of school. Did yeah. you have? It was pretty much straight into something with creating media. Like, did you have anything before that, or was it like? high school into some amount of college or like how so, did that go as far as the transition there or how that started i was in high school the closest thing to a video camera um i, I wasn't really like super video friendly it was like tech friendly i okay. wanted i wanted the nicest digital camera i could get yeah and so my grandmother got me uh like the Samsung, like eight megapixel camera, which at the yeah. time was dope. But that was like, like, you know, Dan, like I see you're passionate about taking photos. Here you go. I'm not taking like artistic photos. I'm just taking like yeah. just garbage. It's Absolutely. even before like SLR, like DSLRs. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, talking like point and shoot, yeah. but like not like cool point and shoot now. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, today, I remember trendy. that era, but yeah, like the five to eight megapixel, like, kind of basic baseline. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like you're not worried about like depth of field ever. No. It was like, this has this many megapixels, so your photo is going to be in focus. And like, it's going to be cool. Yeah. And it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. You're like, oh, okay. All right. Cool. Awesome. So she got you that. So she got me that. Um, and that was going into 12th grade. That was like my like senior gift. Sick. from, And I was like, okay, cool. In 11th and 12th grade, I didn't want to do video. I wanted to become Edward Snowden before Edward Snowden. Mm. I wanted to work for the NSA. Mm. So I was in like, I was buying and selling computers, rebuilding computers, hacking computers. Like that was like my thing. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I was known for in school. Yeah. And um, like people would come to me with like computer orders, like what they wanted to do with their computer. And I would like go out and build you it. Would spec it out. Yep. In an alternate life, you would be like a Bitcoin billionaire because you would have. You know what? <laughs> I'm in the wrong field. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. That's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's where I, that's where I was. That's where the direction I was headed. And yeah. I was like, okay, cool. This is what I'm going to do. I was going to go to a small tech school, like a kind of, um, I don't know what you call them. Very like small pigeonholed, um, like where mechanics go to get licenses and computer techs just go to like get a quick like I, I don't know what they're referred to as I forget like a trade school oh yeah yeah trade school, trade school. Yeah, yeah. that's what they're called um, so I was gonna go to one of those because the one near us had this like crazy reputation and then I sat back and thought about it a little more like is this all I'm gonna do with my life yeah and so I chose to go to Penn State yeah. instead still in computer science and I was like okay cool computer science this is going to be it i'm at penn state so i can get placement this is like i'm working for something yeah. larger than this small little small town i want to kind of i really want to chase down this nsa dream which yeah. sounds so ridiculous now yeah but, but like i'm obsessed with these moments right because yeah. it's like the what you go through to find your thing is yeah. wild absolutely so within that it's kind of this it was this wild transitionary period where i'm going to penn state I'm surrounded by, I went to a small private school as well in uh, like grade school, K through 12. Yeah. So going to Penn State was my first exposure to anything like Whoa. big. 
I was a private school kid too. It's yeah. weird because you're kind of sheltered. It's like no, so sheltered. Certain social skills you don't learn, and you don't it, like. Yeah. There were so many things that I did not understand. Yeah, um, that's like social skills. How to how to speak with people. How to be in groups of people. Yeah. How to handle yourself in a even a party setting. Not like raging party, but just like a kind of social get together. It's like yeah. I don't know who to talk to, and if no one's talking to me. I get like super, I'm like super sensitive. Yeah. I'm like, just yeah. like, kind of like, oh, like super self-conscious, like that, just that small, small town vibe where you're like, yeah. I don't belong here. That's cool. I didn't realize that about you. And I think it's like a, a strange nod to people that did go to school like that. Like, I mean, at least for me, my parents wanted the best for me. It wasn't yeah. some bad thing that they planned, but like you talk to a lot of kids like that and it's a certain thing you have to break out of later in life. And it's like, a, yeah. I think when people know, it's like, oh yeah, you made it out too. Like you figured it out. Yeah. 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 yeah I have that conversation quite frequently about yeah. like the people that can't get out of that. It's weird. It's hard. And it's like, don't the, the, th it is hard, but it's also an option. Yeah. And some people are just okay with that. Oh, and oh, it's nothing, yeah. nothing to knock them, nothing against whatever they have holding them there in that comfort zone. Yeah. But I don't, I truly don't think that, um, they can realize their full potential yeah, without. Yeah. That's an issue. But, and again, like it's why I'm obsessed with this, right? Yeah. Like as, as the more you kind of learn other people can do it and find these things, it's like, oh shit. All right, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, I mean, end of the day, that's kind of, I kind of want to lead by example with that. It's like, yeah. I can do it. I came from next to nothing. Like, I grew up in a not like not wealthy household, like nothing great at all. And I just like had to kind of pigeonhole my way through life. But dude, I feel that so heavily. Yeah. So cool. So you figure out college, you're going there totally different, totally different yeah. career path in mind. Where does that pivot happen where you go to filming surgeries and people getting cut <laughs> open? Uh, so there's a, a big gap in between there because even between, between then and like the the medical field it was being at penn state being around these people mm -hmm. um we i was part of like kind of the social events i tried to get involved with like student government mm -hmm. because that was like the only way i could potentially socialize with these yeah. people so i was like okay so i got inv uh, involved with the student government there at penn state and then they started having these events where like we would invite musicians or artists out like okay cool um this this is interesting i like music but i've never had like access to music so we invited or, or there were there were bands coming in at the same time there were people on the outside outskirts like friends of friends that brought me to like shows with bands um that i didn't know about but they were local and introduced me to them and i was like okay cool how can I meld these two worlds? So I'm all, like, it, it was more of just like a, Hey, I want to throw, throw you guys a bone if I can yeah. somehow, some way. So I invited this band that I first saw live, like only one time connected with briefly. I was like, Hey, do you guys want to play at Penn state? And to them, Penn state, Oh my, yeah. Oh, like they, they're not playing big shows. Yeah. And I was like, the Penn state show wasn't a big show, but, Okay. And they were also like a hardcore like rock band. So I was like, if you can dumb it down and bring it acoustic, it'll appeal and people will chase that and listen and I can probably get you guys more shows. So then they came out, did that. And then I started like working with this band regularly where I was like, hey, do you want to do a show here? Do you want to do like, let's, I set up after the Penn State thing, I set up a Starbucks tour. An acoustic, a Starbucks acoustic tour. Oh my, what year? This would have been 2008, 2009, 2008. Man's ahead of his time. Oh, it was, it was brilliant. No, it wasn't. It was horrible. <laughs> uh, we got paid in Frappuccinos and Cappuccinos. Yeah, but you're bringing fans out, right? Like we're bringing pretty... fans out and we're bringing business to the, to Starbucks. Selling merch? Selling a lot of merch. Cool. So that was like, okay, there's, it, it was a toss up and it was like, you know what? It's exposure. This is a local band. Yeah. And being associated with Starbucks at the time, it was like, okay, cool. Like we're playing, uh, six or seven, eight different Starbucks in the region. And Dude. it's like, okay, like, let's just, 
Let's milk it for all it's worth. I think there's a bigger lesson there though, right? Of like, it takes a certain mind to be like, what's something that I can do, right? Like that's a creative something where you're like, this isn't happening, but this is a solution and I can get at this exposure. And you know, like that's, that's awesome. Exactly. And I, I, my dad was a drummer. I played the drums growing up, played a few different instruments, but I was never talented enough to like be in a band. Yeah. And I was like, I always had a passion for music and being around it. The closest I could get to being in a band was help kind of manage and book and yeah. handle like the logistics of being in a band. Yeah. Um, so I did all the Starbucks stuff and then eventually we kind of snowballed into just working to like, I was like a part of the system with them yeah. and I started promoting shows and I started like making my own like mini festivals, like 10 to 20 bands on a bill for yeah. 20 bucks. Uh, it's just wild to me because I've heard this progression of the story yeah. and normally it turns into, so I started managing bands. So I started tour managing yeah. bands. So I became a promoter, but then I already know part of the story where you're filming surgeries. So the, I'm, yeah, this is wild. Yeah. There were a lot of different things that I tried. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those like life lessons of like, try and if you fail or if it doesn't work out yeah try it like try something a little different or yeah. like still like stay in your lane but like you can veer off and you can find another way to still scratch that itch pursue your dreams find your passion and you never know where you're gonna end up but that was kind of like that was the vibe that's amazing yeah that was um that was that was a year two years maybe okay. of my life two or two or three years i kept promoting concerts uh i was involved with them i oh man it's pretty embarrassing there i mean the people i tried to become part of the band okay and i play i can't believe i'm saying this publicly you don't there's, have there's certain people that know this <laughs> but I, I had such a strong urge to be in a band yeah. that I was like, I need to be on stage. Yeah. I'm going to play lights. Yeah. I'm going to play lights. I there are videos on the internet of me playing lights in a band and on stage, embarrassing myself, headbanging, like doing the thing without making a single sound. What year? This would have been... 2010, 2011. I don't think that's embarrassing because I remember <laughs> that scene and I remember the oh, ridiculous yeah. things that would happen. You said there's a hardcore-ish band? Yeah. Oh, Dude, yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, the amount of synth players and the amount of ridiculous oh. things that was happening, like, bro, I get it. And I also get, like, everything you were saying about, like, wanting to be a part of it. Like, I know that feeling because I have zero musical talent, but then when I learned and saw music in the community, I was just like, this is awesome and I want to be a part of it. Yeah. So I totally get that. And that sounds just like a kid that's like, yo, give me anything. I'm excited. Exactly. My that's logic, awesome. my logic was like, what band out there? How can we separate ourselves? Yeah. So I would like the major touring bands have LDs and they have their stuff together. That's cool. But for us local guys that are competing in the local market, trying to get the big shows, trying to stand out, because that's like the whole thing in the local scene is like, how are we going to stand out from oh. the rest? We don't sound different. How are we going to sound different? Oh, we sound... And like everyone's got their own angle. Yeah. So my angle and presentation to the band and like being like us being us, it was like, yo, lights, let's do it. I'm going to I'm gonna spend like 1500 bucks on the lighting kit. Yeah. I have like DMX everything out. We're going to have art. We're going to travel with Haze because half these venues like on the local scale don't really provide Haze for a local act. Um, so I just went balls out and like let's let's just do this and then we banged around for a bit and it was like it was cool it got a little weird and the dynamic with the band was like some of the guys were like dog why are you on stage and then the other guys were like no we like it like this is rat like yeah he's like and it was like 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 the stage uh like the energy on stage the everything's like okay cool um and so I continue to do that. I show up in like band promos, like promo photos and stuff like that in the music video, AKA still not making a sound the music video. There are no lights in this said music video that I directed. Yeah. And I was like, okay, all right, 
record it. I was like, okay, I'm going to try another lane too while we're at it. I'm going to record our first LP or EP. Oh. It's so like, okay. You did the recording? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to start a recording studio in my parents' attic. So I was like, okay, yeah, awesome. And then within that, I'm not going to, that's long winded. Yeah, yeah. But did that, did that for a bunch of local bands. And my whole thing, this is kind of the angle that I took. It's like when bands are in there, mm. there's no one documenting. Mm-hmm. So let me film you guys while you're in here. Handling way too much. Cause if I'm recording an album, I shouldn't also be filming. Right. Cause that's like, that's double dipping. And my focus is not on the music, it's on both. Yeah, but you say that now with understanding, but it's like, yeah. I, again, I get it. I yeah. get just like that excitement of like, how can I do this and this, yep. this and this? I fucking get it. Any any little thing I could do to get more involved or yep. contribute to the the greater goal, the greater mission of like getting this band out there was like my, I was like, okay. Yeah. Like how can I share their story, whether it's mu- like through the music, recording the music, yep. filming their story. Um, that was pretty much the lane and avenue I wanted to take. Yep. And the EP came out and it was garbage. Mm. Uh, did not belong. I did not belong recording music, but yeah. for what it was, it was okay. And again, back to what you said though, is just like you kept trying. Like it was yeah. just like, sweet, this is a slightly different variation, but it still fulfills the goal. Yep. What if I try this? Yep. That's awesome. Yep. So I did the music thing uh, and like started filming that that content for them and created these videos for those guys. Um, and it was more or less like that carried on. And then eventually the, the band didn't really dissolve, but like there were member changes. And then it was like, kind of like it faded. And I, at the time I was getting married, Whoa. um, now divorced, but I was getting married. And then it was like, okay, I need to, I was going to school as yeah. well still at, yeah. I, I transferred from Penn State sorry th- I'm like all over the place no no dude um, you're good amidst leaving like I was at Penn State when I was getting those guys shows I within the transition of like wanting to do a recording studio and film these the bands and like promoting shows I transferred schools because I realized like yo it's computer science thing like I want to be in the arts like mm-hmm. the NSA dream, like the Edward Snowden stuff. Yeah. Like not, not for me. Yeah. I can't, like it doesn't, cannot compute. Yeah. I, I'm like, okay. So I transferred to a small school just outside of Amish country, Kutztown University uh, in the cornfields of Pennsylvania and um, went to school there for electronic media and fine arts. Mm-hmm. So it was like broadcast TV and radio. Mm-hmm as well as fine arts being photography, uh, short films, like kind of like just learning like Premiere, Photoshop, how to use a DSLR to film videos and stuff like that. Yeah. So that was like, that was the lane. I was going down simultaneously working with the bands. Like the bands was, the band life was outside of school, extracurricular, like doing my thing. You stayed busy. I was busy. Yeah. Yeah. And I used the school equipment. Yeah. Oh, smart. With the band stuff. Smart. So I was like, okay, I can, I can really, I can make use of everything, all my resources. Um, so going into my junior year, no, I'm sorry, senior year of college, um, I was working, did some videos with this YouTube kid. Uh, his name's Dustin Tavella. He's in LA. Actually, he was in LA for a while. I think he's in Texas now. But at the time, I got asked to do like a jingle for Chick-fil-A. Fucking sick. Yeah. And it was like, I, I didn't, I, I had connections and it wasn't like, mm-hmm. wasn't great. But they were like, hey, can you like make a video for the spicy chicken biscuit when it comes out? Because this was like pre-spicy chicken biscuit. That's like, that's the timestamp on this. And uh, they're like, it's going to be coming out Groundhog's Day. So if, the, the, so however you can do it, we want the jingle to read or uh, basically uh, explain that if you see the shadow, it's either if you see the shadow or don't see the shadow, I don't know, whatever the yeah, thing is. I don't remember. Uh, if you see it or don't see it, you get a free Chick-fil-A chicken or a spicy chicken biscuit on Groundhog's Day. It's like, okay, cool. So I, pr- I, I go shop around YouTube and friends of friends, like I basically email this kid, Dustin Tavella, email him or I maybe DM him on Twitter or something. I was like, Hey, 
I have this project. If you want to get involved, I feel like your like brand and your identity on YouTube would be a good fit. Yeah. If you can write a song about a spicy chicken biscuit. So he did that. We partnered up. It was like a small, like $2,000 project. But at the time being in school, it was like, yo, 2,000 bucks. Massive. Chick-fil-A. Massive. Okay. Hell yeah. So jumped on that and worked with him and like continue to make content with him. I eventually moved out of my parents' house and lived in his basement. And I was like, it was just like him and myself doing YouTube stuff. This is kind of band fizzled out. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm just with this guy. I'm committed. Um, he was kind of getting some recognition Mm -hmm. in the public, like in the public eye, he was on, uh, it was, he was on one of those reality shows, uh, oh, okay. like not Bachelorette, but like the country version of it. Funny. Sweet Home Alabama or Sweet something. I don't know. He was on one of those. But before that, he was working with me and we were working together um, on all this like YouTube content. Yeah. Before it is what it is, the animal that it is. Exactly. And um, what happened from there was building this content, I, I kind of create a relationship with his manager. Mm-hmm. And his manager was a director producer mm-hmm. from Texas, or so I thought. Right, the first version of that. The first version of that. My first exposure to someone of that level, of yeah. that caliber. It was like, okay, cool. Um, and then he started having these conversations with me. He's like, "Hey, I'm making a feature film. How would you feel about shooting a behind-the-scenes documentary on it? I'll give you fifteen thousand dollars for thirty days." That's all you need. It's going to be April, April, 2011. I was like, oh, uh, wow. Yeah. This is like the biggest opportunity I've ever been served. It's like my only issue is like, that's the month of finals. So I don't like it's school or this crazy dream opportunity that just landed in my lap. So brought it to my professors and they were like, Dan, you're an idiot. If you don't do this, if you don't like take a leave of absence, school is always going to be here. Yeah. Jump at this opportunity. The kids around you are starving. Like they're, they're like, this is what everyone's out for. Yeah. And if you're getting handed this before you even graduate, please take it. Yeah. Please. So take a leave of absence. Yeah. Slowly but surely, stop hearing from said producer slash director week after week. And I'm like, Oh boy. Like it was like chasing him down. I get him on the phone. He's like, Hey, I'm about to head into a meeting. Can I call you back? Yeah. Text him, email him. Hey, I haven't heard from you. Like what's going on three days later. Oh, sorry, man. It's been crazy busy over here trying to get everything together for this film. But like kind of like leading me on, just keeping me at the the end of, yeah. of the bait or yeah. whatever, end of the line. And I was like, oh man, like, are you kidding me? Um, trying to sit with this and be okay with like, my parents were like, okay, yeah, you can, I mean, if this is a thing, you can take, you can leave school. They were supportive. And then he just slowly but surely just disappeared and completely ghosted me. And I was like, okay, um, I either go back to school. Yeah. Or kind of give him a big fuck you. Like, I can make this. I can do this on my own. And with or without your 15 grand, I'm going to prove my worth Mm -hmm. without having a college degree. Yeah. Wow. So that's a moment right there. Yeah. It was a, it was a big, like, I was hurt. Yeah. And I was like, how, this isn't cool. This isn't okay. I don't like just at least communicate with me about it. Yeah. Like, as like in the role I'm in now, it's like communication is everything. It can go a long way. So it's almost like that taste of the bad gave you enough of like a, of a drive to be like, fuck this. I'm going to go do it. Right. Yeah. 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 So I spent the next year, almost like year to the day, basically of where this leads into, yeah. um, making YouTube content, making content for people that I shouldn't be making content for, but like literally anything to pay my bills, doing it. just surviving. Yeah going freelance, full-time freelance, making music videos at $200 a pop. Yeah. Like wow. whatever pays the bills, doing shooting weddings, like I wasn't above anything at that point. Just it was like taking work. Just taking work, making work, yeah. kind of getting creative with it, promoting concerts, like doing shows and stuff, like whatever I could do to find my lane. Yeah. And um 
with that, it was a year to the day I got a call from or an email from my aunt who was a VP of this like um, an agency that she was like responsible for like when you walk into a store, this is where they place this item yeah. because it's going to get the most hands on it or most oh, eyes on it. Oh, yeah, like so she, strategic layouts and yes. all that. Yeah, yeah. So she had a relationship with um, an agency that handled and managed Mars Chocolate, which is like Eminem, Snickers, Twix. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's like, Dan, um, I think it'd be a good idea for you to sit down with these guys. Yeah. I scheduled a meeting to New Jersey. Go to P.F. Chang's this date, this time. Yeah. They'll be waiting for you. Yeah. Let's go. Let's all go out to eat. I was like, okay, I don't like, sure. Yeah. So I go in there. I, I go to P.F. Chang's in, I don't know if it's Elizabethtown, New Jersey. I think it was like somewhere out there. And um, sit down with these guys. They got an iPad out. They're already, they're watching my stuff. I had never met them in my life. I sit down and they're like, so love your work. I, I'm like, oh, okay, like, I don't know who you are. Like, I didn't know who they were, their relationship to anything. Like, how would you feel about, um, or at least th- th- at first they asked me, do you have a passport? Yeah. And how soon can you get your immunization? Like your, your like shots and everything. Yeah. Like, I don't have a passport. I can get it as soon as possible. I can go get uh, my shots as soon as possible. What? It's like, well, we want to send you to Indonesia in two weeks if you're up for it. Like, okay. Um, so they wanted me to shoot um, a documentary or kind of like a featurette, kind of just gather content in Indonesia on the cocoa farmers. Oh, wow. From Mars Chocolate, cool. like where that's sourced. Yeah. So the factory's out there. That same, this was like, I went May 2012. Yeah. The meeting was in April, April 2012. Yeah. April 2011 was when that film was supposed to happen. Yeah. The Mars Chocolate thing was three days. The feature film was supposed to be 30 days. Yeah. The three day gig gave me 15 grand and all the camera gear I wanted. The 30 day thing screwed you. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Part of my language. But um, yeah. So I went to Indonesia. I flew for. I flew three days in, yeah. stayed in Indonesia for three days, yeah. three days out. So I was on the road traveling for six days, got to stay in Bali, like just chilled. Like it was like. So that's a taste of like. It was the oh, highlight. It gets good. It gets First good. First class for 18, 18 hours. Like it was just like, okay, all right. So then I created that relationship with Mars Chocolate, did that for a year and a half, filmed Indonesia, all over the US, all their factories kind of like their employee stories, employee recognition stuff, a lot of internal yeah. um, things, which was cool. And it was like, it got the job done, paid really well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, I don't want to fast forward it too much, but- No, I, I mean, I'm, dra- I'm dragging it out. Uh, so, so that gives you the taste. You, you've, by this time, you've perfected your craft enough where you've done all the, the bottom of the barrel jobs. You've gotten the cool corporate job. Yeah. And you're getting paid, you're traveling. What then takes you to music? Where do you get involved in music? So my involvement with music was when I was still at Penn State. Like that's kind of where it started. Yep. And then I put that aside to do this like Mars Chocolate thing. I was still kind of dipping my toes with bands and doing music videos. A little higher product. Like I think I got my first um, label music video with Mm -hmm. Lorna Shore. I don't know if oh, you know okay, those guys. Oh, okay, I do. Yeah, so their music video, God Maker. Okay, I don't know the song, but... Yeah, if you YouTube it. It's, yeah, check it out. It was like, at the time, it was like my highest viewed video ever. Sick. I think it's like, okay. I don't know if it's like 700K or 750K. Okay. Enough it was like, where you're like, oh shit, I did something that mattered. Yeah, 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 and that dropped 2012, Okay, I think. Oh, good. So, all right, cool, I get it. So yeah. you were you were just good enough then where you had your gear, you were dialed, and you're like, okay, cool, I'll still do other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so the Mars gigs were carried me. Yeah. I was able to kind of still I was picking and choosing my music projects and trying to be more selective with like who I took on yeah. and trying to keep it to like label involvement yeah. like solid state records. Uh Lorna Shore wasn't signed at the time. Yeah. They got signed after that video. Um but like Oh, oh Sleeper was okay. like my first like major like I did it 
I did the live video for Hush I L. I don't know if you okay. know that song or whatever. Uh, but that was kind of like gateway there. Mm -hmm. And then all of that started, I got married somewhere in that time. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, um, shit, I have to provide for someone else. Oh. And this freelance life doesn't give me the sense of security that I want yeah. when it comes to that. So I applied all over the country, everywhere. Yeah. Florida, uh, California, and then of all places, Michigan. That's where the surgery film. Yeah. yeah. So I applied to the University of Michigan, went out, drove eight hours. I don't know how long it was. 13 hours to Ann Arbor. Did like a video interview with like against three other people hoping I got the job because at that point I was like, like bone dry on money. I was like, oh man, this is going to be rough. Um, got the gig there. Did um, basically two years. I won three Emmys there. What the well, what? Yeah, for uh, for two for a PSA on skin cancer, uh -huh. uh, PSA on uh, organ donation, and a documentary on nurses that I <laughs> directed and produced. Yeah, my God, that was 2013, 2014. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so it wasn't like in my head when you said that. I was thinking like straight up, like you know those fucked up YouTube videos you watch where somebody's like popping a terrible pimple and it's just like, oh that. no, no, you're no, like no. making artistic video, like you're yes. making like something yes. moving. You yes. weren't just like holding a camera and they're like, all right, we're no, cutting not, it now. No, 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 forget that. I would not. I wouldn't touch <laughs> that's that. That's why I was so yeah. thrown off. I was like, bro, that sounds fucking yeah. terrible. What? There, I mean, there were times like. I did have to be in there in those moments, yeah. but it wasn't like I was attached more to the patient stories. Okay. Okay. And like recovery or this person going through this or funding this research and development project, um, events, uh, in memory of, yeah. uh, a late passing, like stuff yeah. like that. Okay. Got um, it. So yeah, much more on the personal, like human side. Yeah. Uh, and the, the heartwarming. Yeah. Than the like, logistical like this is what a surgery looks like okay and we're gonna cut yeah. open right here there you no, go <laughs> no. less less instructional more uh on the storytelling storytelling yeah 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 so i did that for two years yeah uh and then i was like i was handling i picked up i was like hired as a videographer editor mm -hmm. i was like okay how can i increase my value at the university of michigan picked up a camera video or photo and i was like okay i'm gonna take photos for like all the like publications everything that goes out um basically offering i think i did upwards like 120 photo projects uh in the second year of me working there and i was like okay guys like i want to raise i'm mm -hmm. severely underpaid mm -hmm. this is not okay um here, this is X, Y, and Z, why I should get paid more. Yeah. I, this is, I want this kind of raise. It wasn't asking much at all in the grand scheme of things, but it was like, I deserve it. Yeah. And if this person's getting paid this much, and I know that, um, I'm doing 10X. Yeah. Why? And like, please. And they're like, oh, we'll, we'll think about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah, it definitely looks likely. Definitely looks likely. And then um, at this point, I was... I won the three Emmys and I was like, okay, like you're like, nothing's happening. Y'all aren't like doing anything about this. this is, these are the first Emmys you guys have received within this department. So, um, I'm going to dip. Yeah. Damn. So I was, I got headhunted by a TV station in Florida to like come and produce and like kind of do like programming for, uh, three stations in the U S like they kind of, they did, it's Atlantic City, Washington, D.C., and then Orlando. Like, they had three stations. So I was kind of managing content, ad content, uh, kind of placing commercials and shows. Um, like, run order, all that shit. Dude, you have done all of it. Yeah. Like, you've been in every aspect of it. Yeah. More or less. I've That's tried it. Nuts. I've tried a lot of I'm it. I'm blown away. Yeah. Like, I had a feeling, but geez. Yeah. That was, like... That was the pivot point that could have changed everything. Yeah. Because I went from University of Michigan, working for a university, not having a college degree. Yeah. <laughs> like completely dropping out of school. I have 12 credits left still to this day. Funny. So University of Michigan, I had this company in Florida. 
and I had MIT mm. offer me a job for thirty thousand dollars more than I was making in Florida or would have been making in Florida. Jeez. At the time, personal relationship. I was still married. Yeah. It was on the verge of not. I moved to Florida. I chose Florida because I thought I was going to help yeah. the relationship, and um, did not tell my ex-wife that I got a job offer from MIT because I was like, I'm going to put that aside. Yeah. So turned down MIT, which yeah. I was like, that was the pinnacle of what I could have reached in my mind at the time. Yeah, yeah. So like, okay, college dropout, one of the most prestigious, like kind of big, like big schools out there. I, I think it's Ivy League school. I think, I don't know. It's, it's up there. You're asking the wrong person yeah, yeah, with know, college whatever. things, but, but I know like, the name. It was like MIT yeah. was like legit. I was like, okay, if I can, if MIT wants me, then I'm doing something right. Yeah. And then I just turned that down because I was like, okay, personal stuff takes precedence. Um, did the TV station thing. Relationship didn't change much. Got a divorce. Ended up alone in Florida. Ex's Florida. family was all down there. She was in a comfort zone. She was chill. That's why we moved there. I was alone. So I was like, Whoa. okay, well, how am I going to do this? I can find a job elsewhere. Yeah. I can continue down this TV station route and just like see what's up. So I did that and um, stayed on for another year. Got bored because I'm not creating anything. Yeah. I'm just pressing buttons. Like a little too like it's methodical. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, okay, like I'm, I'm not exercising anything in here. Yeah. So I would take jobs every weekend. So as soon as I clock out on Friday, I'm on a plane to whatever city, to Boston, filming music video or two music videos on a Saturday and a Sunday flying back. Yeah. Just so I can like exercise that. Yeah. And then I would go um, like just doing any odd and end, uh, odds and end sort of jobs that would pay well. Yeah. That would take care of rent for the next three months. Mm -hmm. So I'm like slowly not worrying about like this really mundane, like boring TV job. And then I got my friends together for this like brand deal where I was like, okay guys, let's like, let's go to Yosemite. We mm -hmm. want to go to Yosemite. So how are we going to get people to pay for it? Yeah. So I was like, okay. So we got like GMC trucks on board. GMC was like the major brand. And then there were like a few other like clothing brands um, got King State. No way, board. really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they 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 supplied coffee for the entire trip, which Dude. was dope. Um, but Shouts yeah. Shouts to King State. Yeah. Love that. Love King State. Um, so that trip was being planned for like two months. Um, brought Josh Weaver out on that. Oh. Yeah, that was where Josh and I first like connected, connected. But um, this was like a moment of like, okay, like I'm going to, I want to make content. Yeah. I'm quitting my job. Wow. So two weeks before going to Yosemite, gave yeah. my two weeks notice. I'm like, I guess this is it. I'm going to figure this out. Um, that gig carried me through for a little bit, started picking up other stuff. And this is where I transitioned, not really transitioned back into music, but I was like being around the Tampa music scene. Yeah. I was like going to shows. Yeah filming shows for free, just getting on guest lists. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to turn around a video for you the next day. It's just going to be like a full song. It's like, here, cool. Or do like their whole set, but each different song. Yeah, like just like completely over deliver. Just like be yes, the friend that, that comes was, that out was, and just be like, hey, by the way, here's this. That was the goal every time is like where they just don't expect yeah. what I'm going to hand over. You know, I'm realizing just in everything we've talked about just now is like, I almost, I think I kind of painted you wrong where I thought you were so deep in music, but you've had so much background outside of music. You've done so, so much outside of music. Mm -hmm. You've come back to it. You've done bits with it, but like yeah. Yosemite, all the stuff you've done with Hershey, like doing like medical, like all yeah. like you are legit, like just a director <laughs> producer. Like you, it's not yeah. a specific lane. No, no. I think music ties it all together and it's been the constant yeah. Uh, in, in my life as far as um, kind of carrying me and mm -hmm. kind of like just skipping through these different steps and like I'm always coming back to music somehow, yeah. some way, some involvement yeah. somehow. Um, and yeah, I mean, it kind of, it just ended up like, I won't say falling in my lap because yeah. I like, I definitely pursued things 
and like chase things down and saw opportunity places. And I was like, okay, how can I, how can I take calculated risks yeah. that will benefit me, but mm-hmm. also give whoever I'm working with a benefit as well. Yeah. And that's where like going from Yosemite, yeah. uh, I went and did my first tour with Carol Hood, which is like oh. Tim, Nate, Reed. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, this is their first tour. So there you have it, Dan's story. As you could tell, there was a lot that I didn't know. I was blown away by everything that he's done and been through to get to where he's at now. I feel like that's a really cool thing to hear for anybody chasing that. Um, Again, like I said in the beginning, if you made it to the end of this and you liked it, send us a message on Instagram. Let us know. Share it with your friends. That helps me so, so much. If you want to leave feedback, if you want to subscribe, all of that is the most helpful thing you can do. And it's really appreciated. It was either, no, so, it was at there you go. I'll be two. back next week with um, another episode. Prepping, like setting up. Tim's changes the guitar, his guitar strings. And he's like, yo, that video, dude. Uh, how would you feel about coming on tour with Under Oath? We're going to be coming back. <laughs> and we're going to be doing a, sh- like, we're going to be doing a tour with Bring Me the Horizon. I was like, uh, he's like, I'll send the video to the guys, like these, these updates. And like, if they're down, like, let's talk. Like, we'll for sure, like, make this happen. Like, we're going to be torn in the spring. I hear it in Tim voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, totally. And it was like, it was one of those, like, it, that was the the calculated risk moment. And, like, granted, like, having a good relationship with those guys going in and kind of didn't really know them on a really super personal level. Yeah. But en- enough where I garnered enough respect and I I had enough respect for them in their personal space where it was like, okay, I can kind of like, I know when to have a camera on or off yeah. and make sure yeah. like everything and like paint everyone in a good light, but also be on vibe, like yeah. be on point for Carol Hood. Cause Carol Hood has, has a specific look right. and energy and like air about yes, them. It does. So um, as long as I could provide that, which is what I did, I was like, okay, this is a step in the right direction proving my point, proving my worth. Um, this is all out of pocket, but it's all like, it's all coming back tenfold at yeah. the end of the day. Like if I can make an impact with this, these videos, I'm going to get tours on tours on tours. I mean, again, that lesson there is amazing to me because I like, I just assumed y'all were boys from day one, but no, no, like you're just like, uh, you've done all this corporate work, all this stuff. You're showing up in Tampa. Like you're just making it work, filming shit, over delivering, going out in your car, doing this for free. And that's, I mean, that's a humbling experience having gone from getting paid, paid in corporate stuff. So yeah. like, again, I'm blown away by the ebbs and flows and like the pivots that you've made pretty, I mean, like bold pivots at times, which is nuts. Yeah. So you do that, you get the under oath gig. Get the under oath gig. And then while we're on the road, there's conversations happening of like studio, oh, album. And then I'm filming all this behind the scenes content and it's like, okay, well, this would be cool to use in a documentary down the road. I would love to film like the studio documentary. If you guys, if, if you guys are interested, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know, like timing on that. And then like it went from Bring the Horizon tour to I don't know what tours after that. There were like one-offs here and there, like festival shows. And it was kind of just snowballed into this like constant, like I'm just under a video guy. Yeah. Like I'm producing all under Earth content. Yeah. And then it became like the, the documentary, the studio documentary conversations just stopped happening. And it was just assumed more or less kind <laughs> yeah, of. Yeah. And fearless, was involved with that and um, working with those guys. And then it was like starting talking about budgets and then I'm find myself uh, in the studio with them for two months for 60 days, Uh, 2016. I think it was 2016. Right around. They probably, yeah. No. 2016, 17. No. I think it was 2017. Yeah. Maybe 17. I think it was 17. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It was, mm, and I don't know, it was around there. Right about But then. I was in the studio with them for two months. While I was in the studio, I met people on the road. 
mm. through Tim, through these other people. Yep. I met Father John Misty's manager. Ah. And I was with him in Boston. We were out one night and it was just like, okay, cool. Uh, he's like, I'm going to be using you someday. Like, huh. I'm, I'm going to hire you, like, for sure. And I was like, you hear that all the time. Always. And it's like, okay, uh, sounds good, man. Look yeah. forward to hearing from you. And then all of a sudden, I'm in the studio. I get an email from this guy. I'm like, why do I know this name? He's like, yeah, Father John Misty's going on the road. How would you feel about, like, producing content for him for, like, two weeks? Like, doing like full song, like music videos where like four camera setups, um, more like behind the scenes stuff. Just basically we want to try and up all his content and kind of, it was for the pure comedy um, album cycle. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So I'm going from this, like one of my biggest projects being the Under Oath documentary off that straight onto the road with um, John, John uh, sorry, Father John Misty. Yeah. And then, Father John Misty turned into another band, Lucius. I don't know if you know Lucius. Um, and then Rostam, which is X Vampire Weekend. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I toured with Rostam briefly, did his Bike Dream music video through Paris, Copenhagen, and Berlin. Oh. And we, we, yeah, we went all over the place. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much. But um, yeah, that it's just like all of doing that three show free gig for Carol Hood. What a lesson. All of those things. It yeah. took care of me for the next two years, yeah. essentially. But I should also clarify, it's like if anybody doesn't know your work, like the other point is, yeah, it was three shows, it was a risk, but the reason, it, it was it's the combination, right? It's the risk and the fact that by then you had so much experience yeah. that you probably turned a remarkable product. I don't know about remarkable because I'm still working on it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, I can't yeah. like, I'm to this day, it's like, I want to, I need to be better. I yeah. need to get better. There's always something I could be sharpening, sure. whether that's my storytelling, whether that's my editing, whether that's, um, finding my stories and the angle I take yeah. on, you know, or listening more, even yeah. listening to when people are speaking, um, and just being, being more present. Oh, um, I struggle there, with that, man. Yeah, I, I struggle. Like, there's so much going on, and I'm all, always struggling so much. Or, yeah, juggling so much that I lose track, and yeah. I can't like in one ear, out the other, over my head, or I miss a moment, anything like that. So, there's always something to be working on. Yeah, totally. But, but I mean, still to the point. Like, I do think that at least by the time that I saw your work when you were doing the under oath stuff, yeah. like, it wasn't just some kid following a band with a camera, like that shit felt cinematic that shit it Thanks, felt man. you know like really yeah. like to me at least i didn't see the carol hood side but yeah. by the time that i was looking at your stuff with it wasn't Earth, much different yeah like yeah. it was it was a story it it, yeah. it wasn't just a camera following it you were telling a story and that to me is cool it's like not only did you take a risk you backed that risk with talent and i i think that those Appreciate two that. are important yeah i mean it was uh it was Something. I don't know what that was, but uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, you, you uh, just, yeah. you, you had a, you had a product that you refined and you, yeah. you did something very beautiful with that. And that explains that, that ties so many pieces together for me and I'm so blown away. So then, and I, I want to, there's still so much I want to say, but I want to keep it within somewhat of a time frame. You had a pivot again, where you did all this incredible stuff with music, even more so that I didn't realize yeah. you just told me. You did the Amtrak trip, which is a personal thing yeah. that you just, uh, it was, tell me that briefly. Uh, so I was like, I need, I want to travel the country. Yep. I wanted to do it not by car. I was so, I was in a tour bus at all yep. times. So I was like, okay, what other way can I do it? Uh, taking a plane all across the country to all these different cities would be really expensive. Yep. Uh, so what's another mode of transportation? Planes, trains, and automobiles. I took the train route. And I was like, okay, Amtrak, what options do you have? And I found like this, it was a 30 day train pass. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Oh, with you where you can that? do like 12 segments, meaning like stop and connect in different cities. So I had 12 stops Whoa. over 26 days. Cool. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. I'm going to do like a daily vlog series. Yeah. Um, 
and I went in just, I, it was like $700 for the ticket, which mm-hmm. is like the price of a f- like cross country flight. So it was like, it's amazing, easy, no brainer. I don't need a place to sleep. I'm going to sleep on the train. I'm going to link up with all my friends across the country. Uh, if I have a place to stay, I have a place to stay. If I don't, I'm sleeping on the train. Um, or I'll pay 40 bucks a night at a hotel. Like yeah. I just kind of wanted to like live it and yeah. be in it and not be like in a bunk Yep. Or in a nice hotel or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to experience the country for what it was. Is that all somewhere? Is that still YouTube? Yeah, it's yeah. There? Amtrak yeah. across America. Dan Newman. If you search Amtrak across America, the SEO is kind of shit. But I'll link it in this. But yeah, it was. Yeah. There's a. I think there's a playlist. Like a, it's either 17 episodes or 11 episodes. Yeah. I don't know something like that. But I remember like as you were doing it in real time, I was like, this is cool. Like it was. It was a fun adventure, and it was. Again, it was cool to watch somebody break off. And it makes sense now because you weren't just music. I've always been doing these things and telling these stories. So that's awesome. Like you did that. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was a good time. It was like a good exercise of energy. Yep. um, Creative energy, but also like seeing the things I've wanted to see, um, like going to Albuquerque, New Mexico and like doing my own Breaking Bad tour. Yeah. And just like going to every single shooting location, like that, that was like, that was everything to me. Yeah. So I had to do that. But yeah, while I was on that trip, I got a phone call from this boxing company yeah. um, that I'm working with now, Matron Boxing. And I, at this time I was doing some freelance stuff for them. Yeah. But this is like, hey, we're going to open up shop in the US. We want to have, we're going to have like headquarters there, yeah. Manhattan. Right. How would you feel about moving to New York? What would it take? What would it cost you? What does that look like? Full time. Like, and I was like, I'd quit music. I'd do everything, whatever it looks like. Yeah. Um, let's talk. Yeah. And then I spent the next, that was like halfway through my trip. That was on the leg between um, Flagstaff, Arizona to Chicago. Yeah. And I was like on a three hour delay, got the phone call. Um, it was like, oh man, this is going to, you this is kind it. of rock my world, but this is the change I, I need to get to New York City. Yeah. I've always dreamt about moving to New York. Wow. Somehow, some way. Wow. Dude. I was like talking about doing that when I, f- like, before I got into touring with music and stuff. Whoa. I was, um, I have a friend, Justin Bettman, who's in New York, celebrity photographer. Do you know him? Dude, he does those really cool portraits where it like it zooms out, like he'll set these crazy sets yeah. in New York City. Yeah, he and all did that. the whole iPhone 11 campaign. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, uh, That's my I, homie. Oh my God. I yeah. met him through El Macias at, um, oh, it was the Annenberg space shout for photography. Justin. Yeah, dude. Huge shouts. That guy's amazing. Yeah. You should have him on the podcast. I, yeah, I should. That's yeah, a, you should. Yeah. He's great. His work is amazing. He's yes. over in LA a lot. I don't, I think he's in Costa Rica right now, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's like when I was in Florida working for the TV station, yeah. my weekend trips, if I wasn't working, yeah. I would take $150, $200 flights yeah. to New York city to work in a coffee shop and meet with Justin just to like pick his brain. Yeah. Like those are some of the first conversations I had was like, Hey, how do I live and make it in New York city? Yeah. I want to live here. I don't know how to, he's like, you know, just keep working your day rates where they are now with mm-hmm. the bands and the music and whatever you're doing, like they should be 10 X. You right. should be making five to 10 grand a day. Yeah. You would make five to 10 grand a day here if you're doing what you're doing now. Right. I was like, man, like how I, like I just couldn't figure it out. Well, that's hard too, right? Cause you say that number and like in certain industries and realistically, yeah, that's fair. That's what it should be. Mm-hmm. But then you and I both know like most indie budgets, we know most mm. music budgets. So it's like, you hear that from a dude who's making it and yeah. it's like, I can only imagine that you're like, yeah, must be nice. Like it doesn't, yeah. I can't imagine that was a real thought. Yeah. I mean, it was, <sighs> It was attainable, mm-hmm. but it was like, what stepping stones did I have to take to sure. get there? How do I, like... Good way to put it. I want to get there, whatever I could do, so... So when this opportunity came up, the yeah. gears are turning. <laughs> yeah, so this was... Those conversations were happening with Justin probably 2016, Yeah, I think. Mid, like, yeah. mid 2016. This, fo- this uh, Amtrak trip was... I think 2017, no, 2018. It was winter 2017 or 2018. I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, it was like, hey, we're going to do this. Uh, do you want to do it? Are you interested? 
I was continuing to freelance for them, came to a show and did a, did a fight in New York mm -hmm. on a freelance basis, met with the CEO and um, one of the other guys. And it was like the guy that was offering me the job. And they're like, how do these numbers sound? Can you do this? Would you be interested? Let's lock it in. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. Deal. So then I um, finished out my touring obligations. Yeah. Um, wrapped up with Under Oath in Europe. Mm. Was working on a wine documentary like right before Europe. So did wine documentary, went to Europe for two weeks and then came home, had a day to pack in St. Petersburg and then on the road for two or three days, started my first day in Manhattan. Um, July 7th, 2018. Wow. And yeah. since then, since then full time, full steam ahead, uh, I've been working with these guys, been working full time for match and boxing now, whatever year it is, 2020. <laughs> just got into the year 20s, and a half, baby. Year and a half, almost yeah. year seven. I don't know, something like that. But so now yeah. that I understand your story, yeah, <laughs> uh, dude, I'm, I'm actually blown away because it, 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 it makes so much more sense now. And the fact that you, you're so capable of doing yeah. anything really as a creative with where you're at now, like, is this checking a new box? Like, I, I like, what is it like now to be doing this? Cause like you were telling me how much you've been traveling and you're kind of telling a different story, right? Yeah. Like you're getting to learn these fighters. You're getting to spend real time with them. You're getting to make like all of this different content for them. And you're living in your dream city. Yeah. So this is a totally different, different Avenue than what I had ever imagined yeah um like yeah i live in new york city that's mm -hmm. my mailing address <laughs> i live in an airplane yeah more or less uh this month alone uh today's i don't know what day it is the 20 something i don't know 20 something yeah 2020 so far i've yeah close to f I'll, I'll wrap up t the first month of 2020 with like eighteen thousand miles flown yeah. I'll be, I, I will have been home for four days total yeah. for the month of January. Um, but being with the, this company and on the road and like traveling, I'm telling all these stories. I'm, I have access to people that not many people have access to on a level at which I have the access, like where it's like I'm in, in these fighters homes with them, having breakfast with them, filming them, eating breakfast and sh like uh, them bringing us, and showing us their car collection and yeah. like, just like little things, little experiences where it's like, yo, like there's a human side to everyone, including yeah. these world championship fighters, these guys that are like, uh, otherworldly to the general public. So I found that I wanted to, I'm, my, my route is just like telling these stories and sharing the human aspect. Yeah. And kind of humanizing them to like where even even someone like like Jake Paul yeah. who's going to be fighting next week yeah what he's known for what he's known as people has have the stigma for him he may not be that right. and he's not that but spending time with him and right. filming with him like trying to my goal is to show that like hey like he's one of us yeah like he's human Everyone has their faults, yeah. but like he's just a normal guy and yeah. he's training hard. He's trying to fight. He's fighting for his life. And yeah, he has some other things going on in his life and he's kind of larger than life in some ways. But in like overall, he's a good kid. Yeah. He's a good guy. And like I'm, I'm, my goal is to have everyone root for everyone. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. Like, again, I, I think like, as I understand the bigger picture, as I understand the director side of it, it's like, you're just out here telling stories and you're, mm -hmm. you're, uh, it seems like really that's been the underlying thing for a long time as a creative where it's like, okay, bands, music videos, sure. Amtrak trip, sure. Like all of these yeah. different things, anything you did with medical. And it's like, that that's really cool for me to hear. And I, I really would think that listeners would enjoy that too, because it's like, that's the story of, I, I, I feel like you found your thing. I feel like you're, you are that storyteller and this is just another chapter of telling stories. And it's really cool that yeah. 
like I'm so excited. Like I don't even want to say next because I know how good this is, but it's like the progression of you and what you keep doing is cool. And it's just the story of somebody who tells stories. Thanks, man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good. It's an avenue that um it's scratching an itch. Yeah. And I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, it's exhausting. Like my my schedule's pretty rigorous and it's like nonstop, just day after day after day. Yeah. New city in a city for two days, out the next, into yep. another city. But I'm doing what I love. And so many people would kill to have this job yeah. and get to like experience the things I'm experiencing, whether that's the cities, whether that's the people I'm working with, anything like that. It's like, I'm blessed, can't complain. I want to keep telling these stories. How can I make them better? Um, I don't see myself going anywhere else anytime soon because yeah. there's so many more stories to be told. Yeah. And um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So then the last piece of this is if somebody's listening to this and they just relate, right? Like they've tried everything. They get, ex you know, like just like they, they relate to that feeling of finding your spot and then maybe even being a creative that does, you know, like want to chase the director side of things or anything with video you've done it all or you've done a lot. <laughs> yeah. What would you, what advice would you give to somebody who is kind of struggling to find their lane or, you know, just at a spot of turmoil? Like now that you've been through and experienced so many different facets, what is that advice for finding your next step, evolving, maybe not being stoked on where you're at, but somehow having like faith that there's something better? So my my MO, my kind of daily mantra yeah. is just stay positive. Good vibes only. Like I have it tattooed. I have like stay positive on here. Good vibes only. And you're okay. Everything's okay. If you're living, breathing, and waking up to see another day, you're okay. Do not give up. It's not going to be an overnight success. Like this, I'm where I'm at right now. It's been 12 years, 13 years, something like that. Granted, you see the most recent, polished, perfect, like, oh, wow, like, yeah, it would have been nice if I got to tour with Under Oath. Like, no, like, I, I, I didn't necessarily have to tour in like the small, like, small band, like the small vans or whatever. But there was, there was so much that went into me getting to that point. Yeah. It's like being on a tour bus. Um, so I would say, Whatever, like, do what makes you happy until it make until it doesn't make you happy anymore, and continue to pursue that, pursue that, pursue that. You're gonna wake up frustrated sometimes, but you're doing you are doing what you love. Keep pursuing that. Keep pursuing that. Keep keep knocking on doors. Take risks. Look for opportunities to kind of change things up. Do things a little differently. Um, something's going to click. Something has to click. And it may not, you may not see it right away, but there's opportunity out there for everyone. Um, yeah, just stay positive and, and keep, keep choosing like to pursue your dream because the second you give up is kind of like just you're thrown in the towel. Yeah. No, that's, I love that. And it's crazy. As you even say that, I think about the story you just told me. And I think about maybe even some of the inspiration from your father throwing in the towel too early mm -hmm. and maybe you exactly. just being like, nah, dad, like I got this, like I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. or, you know, like I, 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 that really rings true to me. And it seems like it all happened for a reason. And it's really cool to talk to you now because I know that this opportunity that you have and what you're able to do is so cool and it's just this progression. So yeah, keep, there's going to be doors that close constantly. Keep opening that door, open another door next to it, open a few doors at the same time, see which one you can walk through, see which one, uh, you know, if the light's off in the room, just turn around, walk away, go to the next one. Like just keep chasing that fire. Just keep chasing the light and something's going to happen. That's massive, dude. That's so massive because like, good Lord, are you proof of that? You know? Yeah. There's been a lot of doors open. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool. It's that, that is so inspiring to me because 
it's so easy to give up and there's so many of these things and like you've had it, right? Like you've had these jobs where it's like, cool, this is cushy, this is good and you've changed it and you've had to open new doors and you've had to have that persistence and it's just that to me. I'm obsessed with learning about that because I think everybody that has success has to go through that yeah. and it's, I just love hearing those stories so fucking thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, there's a matter of like, with each within each of those stories and chasing each thing that I went through and and uh, I wouldn't say reached a pinnacle with much, but it was kind of like I capped mm-hmm. with I, I felt like I capped with under oath. Yeah. It's like okay, and that's what really made me comfortable with opening another door. Yeah. I was like, okay, I don't know if boxing is it, but there's a very bright light. It might be. It's, I'm seeing New York City. I'm living in New York City. Yeah. And I'm getting to travel the world. Yeah. And share stories. Yeah. So I'm going to keep going through this doorway and yeah, but bro, I digress. That's amazing. Thank you. Like for real, Absolutely. this was so cool. Thank you for taking the time. I'm so glad Thanks we were for coming able to, San to Diego. do this. Yeah, exactly. And I really do appreciate your detailed insight on California then and now, the people and the places. People I and feel the places. Like you did a great job explaining California in this. Ex- I mean, that's what life's about. <laughs> Cali vibes, baby. Cali vibes. Amazing. Thank you, bro. Absolutely. <clears throat> do, you, do you address camera or is it? Like, do you address camera off the top at all? Or is it just a matter of like, camera's not there. That's a that's a person that's in the room that happens to be. Yeah. Okay. What's that term is address camera? Well, yeah. Like you're like, I would be addressing camera right now. Oh, you break I see. The, break the fourth wall. Oh, I typically is, haven't. Talking? Okay. I have not addressed cool. camera. No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So good to know. Yeah. Not addressing camera. Yeah. No. For so the then entire we just, thing. Yeah, I'm exactly. Just, okay, we, cool. <laughs> a fourth wall. I see. We're all of a sudden in this world and then we're not. And now we're breaking the fourth wall. That's kind of fun to break it. I'm staring straight into this wall. Just breaking it left (laughs) and right. I kind of want to put this at the end now. (laughs) Fourth wall talk.